Hey guys, it's David Clayton again from GuitarBreakdown.com and today we're going to break down another Mr. Big solo by Paul Gilbert. Um, this one is from the song Merciless off the title album Mr. Big and we actually previously did a lesson on Wind Me Up and in that I spoke about how I wasn't going to do too many Paul Gilbert lessons because there's so many out there and here I am doing another one. So I lied. But actually, this is, I think, going to turn into kind of a series because after posting that first one, we got a lot of emails saying that there's a lack of Mr. Big discussion out there as far as the solos that went on in there. And it's true. I haven't seen a lot of lessons on it. I've seen a few people, as I said in my earlier video, play some of the solos off of that track on YouTube and do a really good job of it. But I, I haven't seen too many of it, too many of those songs broken down. So we're going to try and fill that void. So I hope you guys like this lesson. Uh, this is a really cool solo. It's very, again, very simple. It's it's one of those things where this this first CD by Mr. Big, it was actually a tape way back in the day for me uh, in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s. I can't remember. A long time ago. But the this sat in my cassette player for years, uh, for about two years, and I, I just wore it out, and then I bought the CD, and I just loved this CD, and it was it was one of those things that, it was his transition from Racer X to Mr. Big, and I loved his Racer X stuff, it was very technical, I learned a lot of new techniques as far as, you know, alternate picking and string skipping arpeggios and some sweep pick arpeggios and stuff, but this was when he really started transitioning into phrasing and using pentatonic scales a lot and, and using, you know, soloing with simple phrases in pentatonic and then throwing in those arpeggios. So it was a real cool contrast as opposed to just ripping the whole time. So it really caught my ear. It was easy on the listener's ear because you could follow everything that was going on instead of just hearing the Racer X stuff, which was just blistering throughout. So you could really relate to it, and I think that's why it kind of connected with me. Anyway, that's a long story about that. But uh, so we're gonna do this is we did wind me up. We're gonna do merciless now, and we're probably gonna do take a walk and addicted to the to that rush um, and a few others. Blame it on my youth and stuff like that. So I hope if you guys like this, stick around because those will be coming shortly. Um, this lesson, there's a few cool techniques. Again, like I said, it's very simple, but there's a cool uh, re repetitive technique that he does that gives you some real cool flavors and note choice and stuff. So anyway, enough talking. Hope you guys like this lesson and I'll see you in a second. Thanks. All right. So the first thing we'll talk about are the chords that this solo is going over. Um, actually, before we get into that, I want to talk about the equipment I'm using. I'm usually I have the Sir Badger 18 up there. Sometimes I'll have a Fender. Right now I'm going through the JCM 800. Uh, it's the JCM 1. It's the 50th anniversary Marshall 1 watt amp. And I've had it for quite a while and I've been wanting to do a review on it. Really great amp as far as for, for this kind of stuff, for rock stuff. It, it just, for low volumes, it's such a great tone and you don't have to use any pedals. With that being said, I am using pedals in front of it right now because I wanted to give it First of all, it's the distortion when you really get it cranked to where you need it for this kind of stuff, it's a little uncontrollable. So in this lesson, I may have a hard time controlling it and I apologize for that. But like you'll get feedback at very low volumes and all that kind of stuff. So I lowered the, uh, the distortion level on that or I lowered the, what is it? The, uh, the preamp volume so that I wouldn't, it wouldn't break up as much. And then I compensate with a pedal in front of it to break it up a little bit. And it's a BB preamp by Exotic Effects, so it breaks it up 
in just the right way, but doesn't add that uncontrollability, at least for me it doesn't. And then I have an RC booster boosting it right in front just a little bit. And I usually have a little delay or reverb, but uh, it doesn't really it, it doesn't really work very well in front of this amp, and there's no effects loop, so I didn't use any. I may add it in, in maybe I did in the performance, maybe I used it a little bit, but I may add it to post a little bit. Um, and then also I have it going through the Bogner cabinet, so I'm not using the speaker in the Marshall. Uh, the speaker is good for portability, but it's not really that great. But once you plug this into a really good speaker cab, and this is only a 112 with a Celestion in it, and it sounds great. Really punchy, a lot of bottom end. Um, but when you put it into a 412 cabinet, which I haven't yet, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. So if it's any indication of throwing it into a 112 Wagner with a vintage Celestion, um... To me, it sounds awesome. I use this to practice constantly. So it's just a little uncontrollable, and there's there's a lot of uh, hum. You can hear that. And that's with me trying to ma manipulate a little. If I had that cranked, you'd hear a lot of hum. So it's, it's definitely something that uh, takes a little work. Anyway, I just want to touch on that so that you knew what was going on. I am going to do, like I said, a review on that. I also has the, have the JTM head. Uh, the J JTM 1 watt head, which I love that amp, and that one takes pedals really well. So we'll get into those reviews at one point if you're interested. As far as the rhythm part of this, um, right before the solo, it's doing this thing where it goes. And actually up to tempo. So what that is, it's what we'll go over that riff real quick. So it's playing the low E note. Then it plays the F sharp, which is the second fret of the E string, and pull off. So, so you hit the low E note twice. And then you play the second fret and pull off. And then you go to the third fret and hammer on the fourth fret, all on the E string. So it's and when he goes to that uh, B note on the second fret of the A string, actually that first E that he hits, he's not just hitting the E note, he's hitting the chord, the bar chord of E. So then he goes to that B note, so then he hits an A chord, A bar chord does the same pattern on strings down. So it's the A note. So that, I'm not gonna go over that. It's the same thing as the E string, but you play it on the A string, so. And then he plays that chord, which is basically your A bar chord, but instead of playing the open A string, you're playing the uh, the major third, which is the C sharp note, fourth fret on the A string. So instead of so it's and he just plays a D chord, where he's just playing the open D string, and then the top two notes of that D that everybody knows. And he repeats that again. He goes to a D chord, to an A chord, to an E chord. But he does this E chord where he's playing the open E string, then the second fret of the A string, the second fret of the D string, then the fourth fret with his pinky, which is the octave of this note. So it's the fourth fret on the G string, and then two open E strings. Just a great sound. And 
then he uses the bar and he just dives that down slowly. Um, then the solo part, it goes over. And that's basically just an A chord to an E chord with kind of a. And that's doing A chord to the G note on the low E string. Back to the A, A note, or A chord. Then he does this thing where it's it's the E chord barred to the open A and D string. Then he does the B note on the second fret of the A string to the D note of open. So back to the bar of the E thing. So and in between that he actually does so. And that's just your 14th fret double stop on the G and the B string, bent up a little bit, to the 12th fret double stop on the G string and the B string. So, uh, then he does it again, but here he goes, which is the same as this down an octave. Uh, and then he goes into these chords, which it's just a bar chord, your regular uh, simple bar chord on the A string. So first finger on the 10th fret of the A string and then your third finger on the D and G string of the 12th fret. And you walk down, down chromatically from if your first finger is the lead note, you have your 10th fret, 9, 8, 7. So then it skips a fret and goes to the 5th fret, skips another fret, goes to the 3rd fret. And then ends on the a string. So it goes from the third fret, second fret, first fret to the A to the open. So so the whole thing is And he does a few little other things, but that's generally where the solo is going. The solo is over that and then that walk down of the chords. Um, all right, that's enough rhythm talk. Let's get into the solo.